Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. With the prophet Isaiah, we rejoice heartily in, in the Lord, for the day of our deliverance draws near. Having reached the midpoint of our Advent journey, we celebrate what traditionally is known as Gaudete Sunday. Rejoice, for the Lord is near that we may be ready to receive him anew. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sin and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, promised Messiah, long-awaited Savior, justice of God, Lord, have mercy. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, 
to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. Rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me in a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice. Like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels, as the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything, retain what is good, refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body be preserved, blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to testify to the light. This is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, Are you then? What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? So that we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some, prophets, some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But there is one among you to whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord.
Growing up, we were taught, at least in our early years, that Advent was a penitential time, a time to sort of clean house spiritually so that we would be ready for the birth of Jesus. And then as time went on, we added to that the anticipation of the coming of the Messiah. However, we didn't think much about that. You know, that was just a reading we heard at church. We didn't think much about who Jesus was or the Messiah because it, those readings seemed to be about somebody else, somebody far away. What we, for, what we failed to remember and failed to understand was that Scripture cover to cover is God speaking to you personally. God is using the story, the narrative, and the people within the narrative to draw you in, to draw you in, to become part, and, and, and to, to be his kingdom. So, the anticipation of the coming of the Messiah, what does that mean to you? Who is the Messiah in your life? What is the Messiah in your everyday life? The Hebrews of the Old Testament and ultra-Orthodox Jews of today never thought of the Messiah as God-man. There was no divinity. The Messiah was a priest, prophet, and king. King in that he would rule over his people, a benevolent ruler. Prophet in that he would have the ear of God. He could speak with God and God would communicate to him. And priest because... As a benevolent king and prophet, he would pass on God's rich blessings to his people. They would be a people of God in a holy nation, and all the nations of the world would come to them to experience God. Well, after the return from exile and the second building of the second temple, things changed. The Messiah became the warrior. The man who would be filled with a holy fervor and this powerful desire, this fervor to raise an army with God's protection, with God on his side, he would be able to defeat the Romans. However, Catholic Christian images and, and belief that the, in the Messiah is one of priest, prophet, and king what a different priest, prophet, and king, one to come to defeat the enemy within. The Messiah is the human and earthly manifestation of God. God present and living within the lives of his people. Come to establish he has come to establish his kingdom here on earth by drawing us together as his people, as a people of God and a holy nation. Well, here we are, middle of Advent. So how has your Advent preparation been going? What are you anticipating? Are you anticipating a Christmas celebration? Come here for liturgy. Go home and have a fine dinner with family. And that perhaps the end of it until next year. Well, you know, to some degree, my mother had that sort of a, a, a feeling about Christmas. December 24th, Dad would put the tree in the stand, string the lights and test them. Mother decorated the tree. We went to Midnight Mass, which, by the way, was always 12 midnight. The next day, we did our duty and visited the old relatives. And in the next day or so, the uncles and aunts. Sunday after Christmas, brother had company in. And often by midweek or toward the end of the week, the tree was, Christmas tree was in the snowbank. 
and with a big sigh of relief, she would say, it's good to be back to normal. Well, our Advent journey in our anticipation for Christmas and the coming of the Messiah isn't a one-day affair. There is no getting back to normal. There is no getting back to, to normal after we experience the Messiah present in our everyday. The results really ought to go more like this. You know, in our celebration of our own children's birthday, leading up to the, the, the celebration of the birthday, we pulled out photo albums. We reminisced about the good times that we experienced throughout the year, or perhaps throughout our life up to that point. Reminisced about some of the difficulties we had overcome. Then on the day of the birthday celebration, we celebrated with great joy and great hope for the future. The things that would yet be accomplished in the, in the life of our child. Well, our Advent journey and the celebration of Christmas ought to be much like that. Throughout scripture, in the Messianic prophecies, we have many descriptions of what the Messiah, or who the Messiah ought to be. We ought to reflect on these and reminisce about how these prophecies mesh with our own life. Isaiah today is central in unfolding for us the very essence of who the Messiah is. He said, I have been anointed. We see other images of wrapped in the mantle of salvation, wrapped in the mantle of justice. Isaiah said, I have been anointed to bring tidings to the poor, healing to the sick, Liberty to the imprisoned. These are themes that identify for us the Messiah. How the Messiah unfolds in our everyday life. And how the kingdom will be realized. How we can partake in the Messiah's presence in our life to find our way to our rightful place in the kingdom. And as I was thinking about the readings for today and these images, these prophetic images of the Messiah, I couldn't help but think back on the readings we had on Christ, Feast of Christ the King, where four times we hear, twice to the negative and twice to the positive, the very essence of God present in our life. When he told us we would find him, when we clothed the naked, fed the hungry, visited the sick and the poor, visited the sick and those imprisoned, and when we were servants of justice and mercy in the lives of the least among us. Certainly, these are the images of the Messiah, and how to be the Messiah in the everyday life of our brothers and sisters. John went out to the desert. He went out to the desert to experience his own Advent celebration, his Advent journey. He uncluttered his spiritual life and anticipated the coming of the Messiah, the, the point when the Messiah would break into the everyday lives of, of the people. John is clear. The Messiah is already present, although we don't recognize the Messiah. Because we must look for the Messiah and find the Messiah through different eyes. He said you won't find him in some very an important person. You won't find him with the name Messiah emblazoned on his stole. 
you will find him in the everyday life of God's people. So as we approach our Christmas celebration, we approach it prayerfully. And we will celebrate that Christmas day joyfully, joyfully acknowledging that God is present, the Messiah is present in our everyday life. We will celebrate it with great hope that we will be we will be dedicated servants of justice and mercy. That we will feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick and the imprisoned. And that as servants of justice and mercy, we will tend to the needs of our brothers and sisters, the least among us. Then we will have discovered the Messiah in our everyday and we will take our rightful place in the kingdom. We will be a people of God and a holy nation. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoice always, urges St. Paul. Pray without ceasing. As we draw near the celebration of the Incarnation, let us raise up to God our church, our world, and all those in need. That the Spirit of the Lord may be upon all the baptized, and that our compassionate care for one another may bring glad tidings to the poor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the gener generosity this season evokes may help us respond to the needs of our parish and support those who offer direct service to the needy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in these times of limited social interaction, we may reach out via card, phone, or social media to those who may feel isolated and find this time of the year difficult. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In gratitude for the religious sisters, brothers, and priests who have formed us in the faith, that the Spirit of the Lord be upon our Catholic community so that generous men and women may hear the call to serve the church as priests, deacons, and religious. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may heal the broken heart and give comfort to the sick and the lonely and those in special need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the eternal peace of our loved ones who have died, especially Doug Lahata and Rita Paliado. Let us also remember the intentions of the dignity of life for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. God of our longing, hear our Advent prayer. May our lives of service and discipleship always testify to the light and life of Jesus. And we ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving works through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the plan you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, 
and all is at last made manifest. We who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church bread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by the word of God, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with each of you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Since confession by appointment becomes more difficult to accommodate as Christmas draws near, we will establish two blocks of time this week for confessions. I will be available for confession this Monday, that is tomorrow, from 6 to 8 p.m. in the church at Our Lady of the Valley, and on Thursday here in the church at St. Raphael, from 10 a.m. till noon. 
To avoid long lines, it is better to stagger your arrival. Should no one be available in the last half hour, confessions will end. Masks are required. Physical distance will be maintained. Just a note, this, these are not communal reconciliation services. There will not be a horde of priests here for your confession. It will be just you and me and the Holy Spirit. And beginning this Wednesday, December 16th, reservations for Christmas masses are open to all. If you do not have a reservation, it will be like in the airport where you will be in a standby line until we accommodate those who's, who do have reservations. Thank you to all of our wonderful volunteers. Your safe environment renewal deadline is at the end of this month. If you have not completed your annual renewal already, please see the bulletin for directions or call Leah Johnson at the St. Raphael office for assistance. The 2021, and it is really the 2021 parish calendar complements of Heritage Mortuary is available on the table outside after Mass. Be sure to take a parish bulletin. Be mindful of maintaining the appropriate physical distance when leaving the church. And in the parish bulletin, I draw your attention to the pastor's column, What If? It is the what if there's a change in the situation as Christmas comes forward. What happens to our schedule? And as you'll know, everything will be following whatever directives we have from responsible health authorities and from the Diocese of Phoenix. One of the things that bulletin says is that Father John Donato from the University of Portland will be joining us to assist during the Christmas season. This was written a couple of weeks ago, and in the past week he has had to cancel his, his travel because of COVID concerns throughout the West and particularly here in Arizona. So once again, it's you and me and the Holy Spirit. We are still looking for a priest locally that will be able to cover the 4.30 p.m. Mass on Christmas Eve here at St. Raphael, since I cannot bilocate between the two churches at 4 and 4.30. In all things, keep posted. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is in Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.